in your realm where you are experiencing your consciousness at this time, you are living in the realm of the ego. You have found yourself in a place that is an imagined realm of deep separation from that which you would call God. And in that realm in, in which you have created, each of you individually, collectively as a whole, have created in the mind of God through the question, what would it be to create separate from love? And in that powerful inquiry, in another now moment, long, long ago, so it was because you are powerful creators. You are having a dream of separation in which you have forgotten who you are. And you have constructed what this one calls and many call the ego in order to protect you uh, from, to keep you alive when you are young, to keep you alive through creating constructs of belief that will allow you to survive the painful smallness of imagining you are separate from God. And the ego projects out all that it does not want to own in itself. And the major thing that it projects out is a fear of punishment from God for having separated. We are here to tell you, as many are, many guides in this time, that you have never separated from God and the guilt that you feel projected outward as judgment toward others is what perpetuates your suffering. And it is only those who finally come to a realization that they are exhausted with this realm, that they often become teachable, sometimes at their knees, no longer willing to suffer in that way. And it is then that you open to receive guidance from that which you would call the Holy Spirit, the mother ray of that which you would call God. The Holy Spirit is what the divine sent with you, the angel on your other shoulder, to guide and support you during your dream of separation. And this is where the concept of the split mind is shown, the mind that is connected with the 3D separation and the hidden secret guilt of separation and the fear of judgment and attack the fear of being punished for the sin of separation. And then there is the other aspect of mind, which few are connected with. But as you relinquish your commitment and dedication to the ego's grip on your consciousness, you begin to hear the soft, still voice of the Holy Spirit guiding you home. And these are the messages of compassion and mercy, of tenderness. Spirit will never punish you. God will never punish you. And guidance, that is true guidance, leads you toward things that feel good, not as pleasure, but as peace, as greater stillness, as greater ease of mind and heart. The Holy Spirit, the mother energy, calls you homeward through your feelings, through your emotional guidance system. And the more you are able to clear yourself of the obstructions to love's presence, to clear yourself of that what this one calls the shadow material, the more able you are to feel your feelings, to refine your ability to discern the subtleties between those things that pull you into lower frequency and those that lift you up into higher frequencies. And so as guidance, as simple guidance for this time, choose a happier thought, choose a higher frequency focus, choose those things that lift you up, consciously choose them. It may seem almost superficial at times because you have been conditioned to believe that your mind is not powerful when the very opposite is true. Your mind is omnipotently powerful. Therefore, each time you choose consciously 
to think of something uplifting when you would otherwise be pulled into negativity, into lower frequency. Each time you choose that higher frequency choice, you are healing yourself, healing your mind at a very deep level. Yes, it takes repetition because you have been repeatedly countless times over this incarnation and others told, indoctrinated, messaged that you are separate, you are unworthy, you are powerless, and that the world is a place of suffering. And therefore, it will require many repetitive choices again and again and again to choose a higher frequency thought. As an example, when this, this one, this conduit is finding herself deeply in negative focus, she'll think of puppy bellies. So little puppies, little puppy dogs, and their little soft bellies and rubbing their bellies. It seems simple, innocuous, but be, be not fooled. That is a massive frequency uprise, uptick, we could say, for this conduit, this channel. It matters not what you think of, but that you raise your frequency through choosing again and again a higher frequency thought. And the way to have a more refined discernment of higher frequency, the way to pull yourself out of those contracted states is twofold. It is choosing, consciously choosing. I'm going to think about puppy bellies. I'm going to think about kittens. I'm going to think about the sun shining on my face in, on a warm day and clearing, clearing the shadow material, the beliefs and constructs within your mind that keep you in lower states of fear, separation, projection, attack, defense, belief in not enoughness, guilt. And so it is twofold. It is the inner work of clarifying your mind. And it is the simple task, the, you could say, outer or superficial consciousness that says, oh, there I am thinking something negative. I'm going to choose to think about kittens. I'm going to choose to think about puppies. I'm going to choose to think about the warm sun. I'm going to choose to think about fill in the blank. What raises you up to a happier energy? And you may say, yes, but I have to think about these negative things. And we would say this, until and unless you are attuned with a higher frequency, any problem that you are encountering on the 3D realm cannot be solved with the same consciousness that created it. It is only when you raise your consciousness through more uplifted feelings, more alignment with God, more feeling of love and compassion for yourself and the world, that you will find the solutions you seek for any 3D matrix challenge you are facing. We thank you, and we will return again. Hmm.